Admiral's Log. The winds of fortune continue to blow in our favor as we sail ever deeper into the heart of conflict. The clashes between our fleet and the Japanese Armada have been swift and decisive. Each engagement a testament to the skill and valor of our sailors. From the smoke-filled skies to the churning seas below, the echoes of victory ring loud and clear, a rallying cry for all who dare to stand against us. The Japanese, once so confident in their superiority, now find themselves reeling from the sting of defeat, their pride tarnished and their resolve shaken. But there is no time for complacency, no room for hesitation. Even as the dust settles on the battlefield, I can feel the hunger for vengeance burning within me, a fire that cannot be quenched until our enemies are vanquished and our honor restored. The Japanese may have faltered, but they are not defeated. Their fleet still sails, their warriors still stand ready to defend their homeland. And so we must press on, relentless in our pursuit of victory, unwavering in our commitment to justice. Every engagement won brings us one step closer to our ultimate goal, bringing the Japanese Empire to its knees. And I, Admiral Liu Xiangwei, shall not rest until that goal is achieved. Hey guys, still here and welcome back. It's episode 3 of the Chinese War against Japan. So far, it's been extremely successful. I've been able to get 75,000 victory points versus their just shy of 10,000. And we're not done yet. Something interesting has happened on the politics screen, however. Um, the Japanese used to have an economy of about 100 billion, and it's now decreased to 17 billion. I'm not sure exactly what has prompted this. I know that the economies tend to bob up and down, like, seemingly without real reason. I know that I've sunk a couple of their transports, and I'm not sure if this is Brother Monroe's malt that's currently at work, or if there's some other factor. So, seeing it at 17 billion, like, that's less than Spain. Now, that's not to uh, insult Spain, it's just that Spain tends to have the smallest economy, the smallest land mass. It just does not have a large economy. But the Japanese sometime, somehow just have like a third. Let's see if we can make that worse. We're going to do another torpedo attack. This time against the light cruiser Akashi, heavy cruiser Mikuma, and battleship Owari. It's going to be six DDs spread out into two divisions. Gentlemen, you know what to do. Okay, let's see what the position is going to be. We have 11 kilometer range on them. And, yeah, that should be good enough. Okay. We're going to do a cross torp. Much like we did in the previous episode. I'm going to see if it works again. In case you're wondering what the hell are these names of the DDs, they are names of my patrons and YouTube members. I am recording these episodes in batches. I tend to do three or four at a time and then edit everything and then post it. So if you have become a patron and you don't see your name on one of these ships yet, don't worry. It will get there. If you have not seen your name yet, um, <clears throat> and you want to get it in, by all means, become a supporter for the channel. So hit the join button, on YouTube that is, or uh, join as a Patreon member. You'd really be supporting my work, you'd really be making it possible for me to do what I do, to bring in the entertainment that I do, and to uh, help that continue. Alright, I think we're in a pretty decent position to try and torpedo the battleship. I feel like that should be the prize. We're going to do a cross torp and then call it a day. Because against this much firepower, I don't really have the opportunity to hold. Oh, that's not very good for the DD. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of them gone. Please drop your torps. Okay, you have dropped your torps. I really need you to start torping right now. Launched. Tony's putting more torpedoes into the water. Two, two, and another two, if you will. You will not? That launcher on their stern is just not turning. Hmm. Alright. <clears throat> so be it. Now, we have completed our torpedo attack. 
Because at the moment there's not much more I can do. My guns are gonna be largely impotent against this kind of a threat. So I'm not even gonna bother. We're just going to disengage as quickly as possible. I've already lost a DD. I'm not in the market of losing another. Now they do have a light cruiser which might be capable of listening out for torpedoes. I'm not sure if hydrophones have been invented at all yet. I'm not sure. At least I don't have them. But that doesn't mean that they don't exist yet. If this battleship continues on its current course, she should be fine. What about the other torps? Well, she might eat one. As for this heavy cruiser, I'm thinking she'll be perfectly fine. I'm actually really enjoying doing these torpedo attacks. Because it's something that normally is just impossible. Yeah, everything's gonna miss. It's impossible because the AI just knows way too well when the torpedoes are going to get there. And Brother Monroe's mod, in case you haven't seen it yet, link down below in the description, changes that. It means that the AI is no longer instantly aware of the torpedoes and is no longer instantly capable of dodging them perfectly. This case, though, I just messed up my own torpedo launch. I kind of uh, was hoping that with a normal setting they would launch, but they didn't. So, <clears throat> I had to open with all torpedoes at any range. And because of that, and the loss of a destroyer, I got a bit hasty and lost the salvo. So, unfortunately, no hits here. But I think we might have scared the shit out of the uh, Japanese battleship's crew. Which is, well, it's worth something. So that first attack with the DDs didn't go that well. Rematch, as we're going after another couple of convoy ships. This convoy is guarded by one heavy cruiser. Heavy cruisers have proven to be somewhat susceptible to getting torpedoed to death. And I am eager to try that again. But I'm also interested in what the Ken Mrotza can do. Which is my own heavy cruiser. I think that we're going to have to sail quite a bit closer before these guys actually start shooting each other. Yeah, 14 kilometers. Alright, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we're not going to get there fast. This thing is only doing 20 knots. I have two destroyers over on one side. I have four others over on the other side. And I'm trying to sneak either group, whichever happens to go first, out to try and deal with the convoy. Because that, I believe, should be the real prize. The convoy is what we're here to get. Let's smoke up. I don't want to lose a DD to a straight 10-inch round, 10 round. They got 10-inch rounds, right? No, they got 7.5-inch rounds. Torpedoes out to seven clicks. This thing is going to have to really pick what it wants to shoot at. we got destroyers on either side and heavy cruiser coming up their front. Wow, four and a half inch gun destroyed a torpedo? Impressive. That is really impressive. Who did that? The Wolf Dean Styles. All right. Hello, transports. Hello, transports. Please tell me you're not packing. They're fucking packing. Oh, boy. This is going to make my destroyers uh, far, far less safe than I'd hoped. I just... Ah, nice. We're going to pick off some transports. Nope. Not today. Because those things will murder you. If you give them the opportunity to do so. <clears throat> Let's shoot them first, shall we? Shoot them first. Let's see what my HE can do against their ships. Yeah, we're getting some damage in. That's good. We're getting some damage in. Um, let's have one of these guys enable the torpedo launchers against this particular target. We might see these tra uh, these torps travel long. And I, yeah, I can probably do it with guns, but I'm kind of choosing not to. Let's save the rest of the torpedoes. And have the rest of the DDs chase this guy down. The CAs are going to duke it up between each other. It seems that Furutaka is mostly trying to keep its uh, its protectees safe by going after the DDs. As well it should. It's a really slow boat though. 14 knots. The Monotsak's almost on top of them. Decent chance to pen. Torpedoes. Ah, the torpedoes from the Wolf are also joining in. 
Yeah, let's play a game of Murder the Transport. These are supposedly... Yeah, there's more transports around there. Surrendered! <laughs> okay. Um, I accept that you've surrendered. Look, maybe just ignore the torpedoes then, okay? We'll pretend that we didn't actually launch those. Okay, I'm going to detach this ship. You're going to disengage. If your rudder would allow it. This torp will probably go into that, that, that transport. What are you shooting now? You're shooting torpedoes at me! That's not how this is supposed to work. Come around. Yep, there it is. What size you got? 19 inch torpedoes. Just the ones dealing those beautiful amounts of damage. Um, this destroyer is merrily popping away. Look at the size of that hole in the stern. But she's getting so close that disengaging is <laughs> not that likely to happen. We're also putting a couple of smaller dents into this transport. Did you actually take a torpedo hit? You did. You survived. Pretty impressive. You're firing HE at this... F oh. Okay, it's heavily armored. Yeah, my guns can't pan that. I got one 10 incher and it's on the stern. The other ones are the... What, the 4 inchers? Oh, sorry, no, I got two 10 inchers. My chance to hit's fantastic. But it's just mostly getting ignored. No, oh, my poor DD. Let's not evacuate into the heavy cruiser, shall we? Come on, Ken. <clears throat> Let's see what you can. Do I have a power launcher? By any chance? I do. Traveling angle is not great. The f good fortune is that these are fast torpedoes. Which would make it easier to land a torpedo hit on this target. The rest of my angry bees are already upon the others. You've already been... What? Have you been... <laughs> ammo detonated or something? Interesting. Range. 2.1 kilometers. Get ready. Oh no. Let's launch it before we don't have any torpedoes. Transport gone. Come on. Please tell me the launcher hasn't been destroyed. No, it's functional. Launch angles with these things are tiny. Start firing our repair set. Ah! That's all of my torpedoes gone? Okay. Not what I was expecting, nor hoping. I'm going to need the DDs to come back, but one of them is going to go back home. In a box. <clears throat> Some random guy from beyond has... Uh, well, travel to the beyond. Ouch. What should have been a simple mission is now turning into a bit of a disaster. Mutsu surrendered. You're still retreating. What's the situation here? If these damn transports weren't packing, it would be far easier to deal with. Um, you are going to disengage. So the Travis is going to try and go home. You guys are going to come round. We're going to have to send help to that heavy cruiser of mine. But before we'll get there, my heavy cruiser might not be there. I've lost 20% of my crew. Now I'm dealing some damage against the Furutaka. <coughs> but we need to deal it faster. The amount of damage I'm taking is getting very concerning. Oh, that's good damage as well. Very good damage there. We got many bulkheads and spacious quarters. They won't care about crew loss. I have even better bulkheads. 
Maybe I can, maybe I can survive with this ship. They're all half dead, but that's more alive than I wanted them to be. Go on. We can see 38%. If this thing is able to launch another torpedo at me, that could be curtains for the Kenmuro attack. She might not survive that. But I think that this cruiser has plenty of problems of their own. Buoyancy dropping as quickly as that is. She might be going down. My chance to pen, however, is probably drastically decreasing. And with this list, I'm not even sure if I can still get a gun to fire. It's just partial pens. Okay, the uh, Fush Fushimi has surrendered. No, sur yeah, surrendered. The Urakaze has surrendered. Let's see if we can take out the Maya next. We're now 13 kilometers removed from the heavy cruiser. Which is activating some sort of magic pumps. And immediately reducing all of their flooding back to 23%. As opposed to what it was. Oh, there we go. Flooding again. Yeah, this should probably do them in. Gone. Beautiful. Okay, so transport's dead. Heavy cruiser on my side. <laughs> Not great. Not great at all. And we did lose uh, some random guy from beyond. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> Weird nickname. Uh, we also lost another DD, right? No, that wasn't the other encounter. My bad. One month later, and I'm starting to feel like the game has kind of gone off the rails. Here's why. Also, I'm not sure who is actually doing this. Like, if it's the mod, if it's the game, I'm not sure. But the Japanese have a negative GDP. I am not an economist. I don't know how a negative GDP even works. But it's a thing, I guess. Like... Oh, magic. No, I don't even know. Like, everybody working together is what builds an economy, right? Like the output of everybody together. That's the GDP. So if a GDP is negative, is, is everybody destroying shit? <laughs> I guess they are. They are, <laughs> they are rebellious. <laughs> so maybe in that sense. Yeah, but a ne <laughs> negative GDP. I've not seen this. If you have a negative GDP and a negative growth, does that mean your economy is growing? Or, I don't know. It's difficult. Um, let's have another look at another torpedo attack, because I am rather enjoying these. The Japanese are not. We have two groups of destroyers, uh, or rather, that's how I'm planning to take this. We're going to torpedo the Owari. The Yoko is one that I have already encountered a few times, and in the previous month off screen, I was able to torpedo one of her sisters. The Yoko was able to sur survive. Um, and I don't think she got hit, but she knows what my torpedoes are capable of. And she might do her level best to try and prevent such a repeat performance. Let's see, is that your battleship? That is your battleship. Okay, let's put everybody on a normal formation, because they tend to do some weird and wondrous things. How am I going to play this? Smoke up, you're already coming into fire. I'm going to put Metzger's group to the side. I try to come in from a different angle. I'm already getting partial penned. Let's see. Eight kilometers out. Eight kilometers out. Maintain your distance. Well... No, not strictly. We're going to have to close in anyway. It's just that uh, the rest of my torpedo group from the Metzger is not yet in a position. However... No, this is actually perfect. Okay. Um, aggressive torpedo launch here. Aggressive torpedo launch there. Off we go. Off we go. I don't care about the heavy cruiser. The heavy cruiser is going to witness another death upon... Or at the hands of the Japanese. Uh, sorry, at the hands of the Chinese. Is the plan. 
The only thing that the battleship can now do is just try and change course. But it's going to be a difficult dodge for them. Yeah, you guys have all launched. Excellent. Run away. All our damage, of course, is getting blocked. We get a nice wall of skill in the water here. And the rest of the wall of skill is coming in. And in kind of wavy pattern. Ah, there goes the Kevin Bennett. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Oh, yeah, it will. <clears throat> it will. Well? Yep, hit. Two of them. And there's another one that might... No, that'll get dodged. Yeah, I won't be able to sink the Owadi, but she'll be out for a while. Hold on. Travis, what are you still doing here? Damn it. So I just lost two destroyers. And I have absolutely nothing to show for it. Okay. Okay, so be it. I'll just build a couple more destroyers. Unfortunate. I was really hoping that this one was going to go through. And actually inflict a good bunch of damage. So a well-deserved victory for the Japanese. Um, 3,630 victory points for them. And two less destroyers on my fleet. Sorry, fewer. Um, this, not a great fight. But I was able to inflict some more damage. And another battleship out of commission means less power projection. Less power projection means more opportunity to deal damage to all of their transports. So with all of their transports out of commission, I guess we're going to see an even more negative GDP. Like, I don't know. Makuma and Akashi. More destroyers. More torpedoes. And more heavy cruisers. Let's have a go. My main target for this one is the heavy cruiser. So I'm once again trying to position all my DDs. This time around I have fewer. I only have five. And I'm going to try and launch from a slightly closer range. Hoping that that'll mean that the torpedoes don't get as much of a, a spread between them. 5-4. Five, 5-5. Five, five. Excellent. Aggressive launch. Aggressive launch. That CL is moving to a position where it could very well find itself at range or at risk. Let's see if that will work. The Peter's in the water from the Isaac Chung, the Wolf Dean Styles, and the Madison. Now the CL is going to be fine. Because we've got the cross tar up here. I'm kind of concerned about that escort. That CL is fast. Has detected the torpedoes and is very well capable of dealing with a whole bunch more of my destroyer nonsense. And this CA... Ow! Okay, and it's also able to shoot back with torpedoes. Yep, that was two torpedoes onto a DD. Isn't that lovely? Uh, Mikuma seems to be well on track to dodge everything. Nope. <laughs> oh, one hit, but it was a dud. Oh, man. So the Akashi is chasing me down, huh? Oh, we destroyed a torpedo on her. These CLs are going to be in trouble. Sorry, these DDs are going to be in trouble. Also, I think that either the main game or the mod has changed the smoke deployment time. Normally, I think it resets in 5 minutes. Now it's reset in, what, 11 or 12 minutes. So you're getting your smoke screen back. It just takes a lot more time. I really wasn't expecting this thing to throw out a torpedo or two. Look at that. 0% chance to pen, essentially. It says 22. But it has a little bit of main belt and a very healthy 1.8 inch all over. And with that, I can pen that. Not a chance. So best I can do is, well, much the same as I have been doing, run away. And another 1,800 victory points go to the Japanese. Thankfully, I had some stored up. Because I did get some victories on other areas. And, well, I'm really interested to see just how well the Japanese are going to be able to hold their own. Like, will they even make it through the next turn? What's their GDP going to do? I don't have any further battles. Let's have a look. What's their GDP going to do? I'm bleeding money, but I'm not bleeding money negatively. 
I, I, I still cannot wrap my head around a negative GDP. I don't know what that looks like. A negative GDP. Um... Okay. <laughs> now what? <laughs> I'm not sure if this was me. <laughs> um, yeah, this is awkward. This is episode three of the campaign. And I was expecting to have a campaign that ran maybe like 10 or 15 episodes where I was trying to make Japan either fall apart or conquer it altogether. I seem to have achieved that in about three episodes. Uh, I'm not so sure what to do. I'm not so sure what to do. Maybe we can <laughs> we can try doing this again. I will. No, well, I am in touch with Brother Monroe, and we're going to discuss whether this is something that the mod did or something else happened. I'm not sure. I suspect it was the mod because I've never seen this, at least not at this speed. Anyway, um, let me know how you think I should continue. I'm eager to see your ideas in the comments. Uh, maybe I can collapse some more nations. Why not? It's all fun and profit. Up until the point where you have a negative GDP. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you had a good laugh out of this one. And I'll see you soon for more.